Urs Koenig is a keynote speaker with an unusual name and a memorable message. A message that offers tangible, no-nonsense leadership takeaway, inspiring good leaders to become great. As a leader, you're always on stage. It, the show is always on. Your people are observing every single move of yours. And you better watch how you show up in the moments you don't think you're being observed. Urs Kunik is a business leader, a sought-after executive coach, a UN military peacekeeper, and a highly acclaimed ultra-endurance competitor in some of the most grueling races on the planet. Whether healing war zones as a peacekeeper, or crossing or failing to cross hard-fought finish lines, Urs Kunik's lessons in extreme leadership will empower your team to answer the question, what should we do differently on Monday? Ors shines a light on the undervalued importance of humility in leadership. But rejoining the military at almost 50, let me tell you, is not straightforward. So let me start with a little story. It's a dark winter morning last year in Switzerland. I just started my training and I dropped my bulletproof vest on the hard asphalt and I'm being yelled at by a sergeant, 25 years my junior and well below my rank. I'm almost 50 years old. Two days ago, I said a painful goodbye to my two young boys in Seattle. I'm here to be of service, to make a difference. I'm being chewed out by a young punk. It took all that I had not to make a snarky comment. But I bent over, I picked up the vest, and I said nothing at all. I did ask myself, though, how can I be sure I never, ever drop this vest ever again? Little did I know that this would be one of many lessons in humility I would have to learn over the course of the next nine months. Now, humility is not often talked about in the military, and believe me, much less often lived on the ground. And yet humility can make us better leaders in whichever organization we are a part of, and better human beings in our personal lives. And then it dawned on me that that's what humility, and maybe even wisdom, is all about. Not just in military peacekeeping, but in life. I will never have all the answers. We will never have all the answers, but we must. We must absolutely always strive to ask better, deeper, more meaningful, more insightful, more difficult questions. Or as it was for me, from how can I be sure I never ever drop this vest ever again to are we peacekeepers actually in the way of this conflict resolving itself? When Orr's suffered a near-death experience while competing in the race across America, he learned how to come back from loss and embrace failure as a key to success. My biggest and most difficult failure, though, is this one. What does that mean? Yeah. No athlete ever wants to see these three letters next to your name. Did not finish. I'm not the most gifted athlete, but I, I know I have one thing, which is grit. I really don't give up. I just don't and I had to concede. I did not finish the race across America. It was diagnosed as, as HAEP, high altitude pulmonary edema. That's the stuff people die on an Everest, right? So my oxygen saturation, you know, when you go to the doctor for the physical, they put that thing on your finger, and what's the normal value? 99 at sea level, I was at 44%. I was that close to dying, I was that close. So instead of Finishing the race across America, like I was dreaming and planning on for, actually for more than a year, that for, for years I was being helicoptered, choppered to Albuquerque into ICU, where I spent another couple of days and then another couple of days in hospital and then a long drive back to Seattle. More medical complications on the way. I felt devastated. I felt, I felt like such a failure. What did I learn from this failure? And maybe there's a lesson or two for all of us to learn here. The first one is we need to give the emotions of loss, pain and suffering the time and space they require. The armed forces, we call it after action review. That's the analytical part. Going back with a ruthless eye and examining what did I mess up? What did go wrong? And then finally, and that is such a cliche I know, but doing it again. Bouncing back and doing it again. It sounds like such a cliche, you know, failure is good. It builds resilience and strength and self-knowledge. It's a cliche, but it's also true. The fact 
that I have been okay going through this. It took me two years to get over this. Two years, not, I'm not speaking physically, like up here and down here. The fact that I've been okay going through a hard loss like that actually proves that I can do it again if I need to. What do people often do when they get hurt in relationships? What do, they don't commit anymore because they're really concerned about being hurt. I am deeply convinced if we want to achieve something special for us, whatever that might be, for me it was riding across the country, for you it might be to land the dream job, to change to that industry. If we want to, if you want to achieve that, you have to go all in, all in, and make it personal. Thank you. Let Urs Koenig make a lasting impact on your audiences.